who has set out from Homburg with his company and has himself also navigated the stormy surf to be here on this historic day. It is here in these alien and neutral walls that you will commit to peace between your two nations to end a long, hard war that has cost dearly both your armies in sweat and tears. From this day forward, peace shall govern your interactions, and ne'er more will spill a drop of blood. Uh, I offer a toast to an everlasting bond that weds two kingdoms as husband and wife and joins two lands into a thriving one. I offer this toast to peace. To, to peace. peace. To, to peace. peace. I would like to extend this toast in honor of my respect for the citizens of Enfield and draw condolences to the prince. May he live long. May our soldier be sheathed until all time has passed. I offer my toast unto you. Long live Prince Leonard. Long live Prince Leonard. I return your gratitude, noble Lord Nigel. It was not Enfield's humility to have lost so great a foe, but to have set upon such a foe to start. May this convocation stop all strife that our lands have had one to another, and may our homes be forever safe from hostile attack. To this end I say, praise Lord Nigel. Praise Lord Nigel. As a final word of note, may I give honor to Prince Geoffrey Brennan of Enfield and Princess Natalia Scurvy of Humber. We shall this evening be wed for the love and peace between your two nations. May your marriage force the unity between your two lands. <laughs> it so cheers me to see youth and love. I wish good fortune upon this young couple and bid them a hearty congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> This formal Congress is meant to infect your peace and sign a treaty of terms to which you have already agreed. The Charter is at this moment being drawn up to be signed at the end of our festive gathering. It is said that a cheerful heart has a continual feast, so until that time arrives, I have prepared for you, my esteemed visitors, foods and entertainments that I hope delight your senses with contentment in the hearts of men. Upon my word, let the feast begin! <laughs> she can taste like rubber. <laughs> Sad but true! So true! How nice to end this horrid war, Father. With our best generals dead, Natalia, peace is the only option. With Enfield's army destroyed, peace is their only option. Weary of the dead. I fear to smile at this feast be a sin, considering my reproach for the bloodshed that begot this supper. Mm. Happiness is not easily gained. But the jolly feast celebrates what is to be, not what is progressed. Have no sorrow for those who fall. Delight in those who will die for war. Those that did not die for war would not have died in peace, Gavin. So it is foolish to praise the living to no purpose. Perhaps, but who needs to call the sub? We have journeyed down the long road to war and arrived at our destination. Which destination? Victory. The victory is yours, Gavin. If not for your knowledge of Enfield, there would be no feast this day. I mean only to serve. And have more enemies for you to befriend. I would to war with them as well. However, I believe there is one unfinished matter between us. I thought you'd forgot. One does not forget what one owes, Gavin. He really hopes he's not called upon to pay. Come, to our table. Oh, got something stuck. Oh, that's Away in Enfield, I have longed for your return. 
I cannot begin to describe the suffering, torture I have endured without you. Now we can once again be together. So long have we been apart. Oh, yes, Bernard, kiss me. My lips have waited for your return to taste your delicate skin. I have prayed for this reunion, for I know God to the giving that he should send you to my house. Oh, please tell me that you love me. I love thee, Bernard. Now kiss me. Yes. Tell me of your forbearance, of your hidden desires, how you struggle to hold back your true feelings for me. Let me know how this broken romance has tortured you. It has been horrible. Yes. Horrible. And painful. Oh. Hey. I was unhappy. Sorrow! Sorrow! Now kiss me, Bernard! I pray we never part again, my love. May our passion, <laughs> like the sun, burn furiously in the day's course. And unlike said sun, never set. May our love, like the falling water, always roar, roar, and roar, and tumble on and off. If one moment could be held in eternity, may this be a like the cycles of the moon, may our bright love return again, and again, and again. Bernard, you speak about the words. A thousand words of love are not enough. But one simple gesture is a thousand words of work. My lovely deeds are more convincing. Oh, Mildred. Mm. There you are! Oh! 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 Who's the rat this time? Why, Bernard Harrington! Uh, I beg you, sir. I may not harm. I have a mind to remove your head, dog! No, stop it, Cedric! Curve your tongue, Millie. You're next. Oh, Cedric. You can settle this quietly. Tis my wife, scowl! I'll oh, kill him! Oh, oh, oh. I have wealth and gold. Is that compensation? It's best for man to die wealthy. It makes his relatives very happy. After the funeral! Oh! Oh! oh my, my services then. All that Hummer can offer. I have servants of my own who do not bend my wife! Oh. 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 I know secrets I could lend thee of Humbert's political affairs. Secrets are for war, not peace, fool. I pray, Cedric, spare me. If you take my wife, then I'm your life off. And you know, a Prince Leonard's death. What do you mean? Let it this. Not when this feast is over. Explain yourself. I like this man. Now, oh, very well. <coughs> oh. Thank you. Now, tell me of Leonard's death. Simply, rumor I heard spoken. Prince Leonard is to be assassinated. Rubbish. At the end of the speech, he will be killed. Where did you get this? This is the Taya told me. Lies, false words. Did they have lies from her lips? She told you this? No. She spoke to another man. I listened out sight. And who was that man? Uh, I know not. His voice was unfamiliar. Who is the assassin? I know not. When was this? This morning after breakfast. You are certain they will not act until after the treaty is signed? Of that I am certain. It did so stress the man. Tell me what else! What else? That's my full knowledge. That's all I know. We of Enfield hang traitors, Bernard. Ow! 
Gods! Gods! We're not. I am sorry. Are you hurt? Oh, a bruise or two is painted, dude. Cedric Stargarn speaks well of him. Oh, be time Cedric is irrational. This is a jealous brute you married, love. I know not why. Why are you married? Why he is jealous? <laughs> Rip him of his arms and take him where he can do no harm. Yes, sir. Come on now. Assume the position and spread the legs. Come along, Trouble. Trouble? Yes, that is thy new name. I am returning you to the feasting hall. Keep quiet. Speak not a word of what you have heard, especially to Leonard. The less he knows, the less he worries. That is for the better. Come along. Feign ignorance to this plot and resume on the feast. Wait! I told you to strip him of his weapons. I did, sir. This pin could make quite a prick. Take him away. Let us return to the hall. unto you. Perhaps not. Oh? What will you hear from me at Bomberg? Know you of an assassination? I have no such knowledge. I fear there is a plot to kill Prince Leonard. What? Here at the beast? Yes, afterwards. I know nothing of it. If you explore the matter and locate something, I will come to you first. Consider my employment valid. Thank you, Gavin. <laughs> now, I must away to important matters. Oh? What matters are those? I must find some loyal guards to protect Leonard. We must have some escape if all goes wrong. Go, but make your inquiries discreet. Take care, Cedric! <laughs> this beast is royal indeed, is it not, my lady? <laughs> <laughs> oh, friends, friends! <laughs> Quiet! <laughs> Let me tell you how happy I am with your wonderful visit. Just this morning, I met the loveliest lady that ever tread the soil of Axton. Such a beauty she was. When my eyes met hers, my heart was scorched with the burning flame of love. It was not an ordinary desire or lust. It was an uncontrolled passion. Then this lovely flower petter passed by, and I did purchase from him one. Perfect red rose. Upon seeing her, I approached most humbly and passed the rose to her hand with a kiss upon her wrist. <laughs> Such an action caused her to swoon, but I caught her. I know what you mean, Nicholas. And she was enchanted so much that we spent the morning together. I cannot go into the exact exotic details here, but I was a much happier man by lunch. <laughs> Lucky girl. <laughs> what was her name? Well, now, 
you know that name, draw such fervor that the lips quiver when it is spoken. It so smoothly pours in the larynx, it is like sipping the finest of wines. A sound that, when spoken so, quakes one's knees. It creates a timbre that chokes the entrained throat. Such a name I shall try to pronounce with all the grace and beauty that hath its possessor. Such a wonderful name is Mildred. Mildred. Oh, I shiver at that sound. Not Mildred Gibbons. Such is the lovely cadence of perfection. Why? What is wrong with such a name? It's just that Mildred oh, Gibbons. Does that, that name cause your heart to burn with fire? Does that the mere mention of Mildred inspire desire? The problem is Cedric Gibbons. Cedric Gibbons? Cedric Gibbons? Well, it seems to me that throughout the long experience of illustrious life, that name may reside within my memory. Cedric Gibbons. Gibbons. Oh, Cedric Gibbons. The one insane. The great infield hero who returned to the glory for combat in the war. The one and same. The same Cedric Gibbons whose lovely wife is Mildred. <laughs> <laughs> that name hath lost his charm. Cedric is exceedingly jealous to hear such things of his wife. He would seldom hesitate to sever the tongue that spoke it. Pray never to speak of her in public again. It would seem then, out of respect for the valiant hero, that from my lips ne'er more the utterance of Milton, the wife of noble Cedric. Oh, I'm so sorry, Miss Wonder, Tally Jubilations, but I must be gone. Why hurry away so, Nicholas? <laughs> well, my lord, when one engages in such acts of gladness as this they have seen, they do thanks and thank you back. <laughs> Jeffrey, if I may, a word with you. Yes, Cedric. Is your artful wit fit for chess? <laughs> Not at the moment. Um, may we be alone? I shall meet thee in thy chambers, love. Very well, Jeffrey. I have uncovered a dire situation. What is it? I spoke with Bernard in the other room. He told me that someone plans to assassinate your father. Who would do that? The moment I have no suspicions. How did Bernard strike this mine of knowledge? That's why I came to you. <laughs> he heard of it from Natalia. Natalia? When such mendacity spouts from a man of such turbid metal as Bernard, he belittles his own name. Who could envision Natalia's participation in murder? I suppose you set your mind to that purpose, and ascertain what her involvement is in this affair. Me. She exchanged words with a stranger this morning. He may be the assassin. I could raise the subject in conversation. Yes, but do not betray our knowledge of their plans. If they have a plot, let's not let them alter it. They'll not act until after the treaty is signed, so we have until then to find out who it is. My own careful deliberation fails to conceive her in partnership with such a devious deed. I hope that she is not involved, that Bernard is a rotten liar. But I must be certain. If truth implicates Natalia, you can trace her participation back to her father, Nigel. Only he would attempt a murder at a festival of peace. Then let us reason Nigel's predicament. Certainly he cannot act the assassin. The player in this scheme must be a man of brawn and vigor, youth and vassalage. They soothe someone's fears of Enfield to tender a slave. Someone able to make a point of contact with my father. Someone here at the feast. A guard, perchance. A guard couldn't be trusted to succeed. True. <laughs> this task requires the insurance of an adept virtuoso, a master assassin. Reason implicates our guests. Yet who in Nigel's entourage has such capable hands? Nigel keeps many nefarious friends. Bernard is not a suspect, nor to talk. Only your nephew Gavin stands able to hold Nigel's trust. What? He is able-bodied, but not able-minded. Being a relative of both blood and friendship, his heart belongs to Enfield, not Hamburg. He was our confidant during the war, bringing invaluable knowledge of Hamburg's covert plans to our camps in the field. Then what of the Lord of Axton keep? Nicholas? 
do not know him well. As a neutral liaison, he holds a seat of confidence with Nigel. Men do not appear with such prominence in strange lands unless welcome for some extraordinary purpose. I fear a partner to plot against Enfield. We should not distrust him. And in all the land, from sea to barbaric, barren borders, none lives that is as cruel and cabaling as Toro Lewis. Yes, Torrent, <laughs> a most likely candidate. Torrent's bad character is widely known. He's a highly regarded brute and cutthroat, famed in his deceptiveness, imminent in murder. Ne'er lived a man more notorious, and ne'er died a man without his hand being a part of it. For Torrent is the embodiment of death. Yet I extol his capacities beyond reason. So before I make a god of this villain, take heed. That Toro has the might and the mind to murder my father. Toro's powers in battle is unquestionable. If Nigel puts his trust in such a facile butcher, I should fear the letter's life. I will do what I can to remove him from the feast. Until then, speak with Natalia. I shall. Uh, it, mind you. Your father knows nothing of this. Keep it so. Oh, how false this feast. <laughs> so true. So true. Lo, oh. there's Cedric the warrior. Caution for how goes, my brave combatant? Tell me, is that dreadful wound healed, good Cedric? One should not take such pride in deceitful attacks, good Torald. Had you faced me as a true gentleman in a brave and just manner, perchance I should be shamed for the scar I bear. Yet, as your hand passed the wound unto me by an accident of fate, and I live to this day despite your sorrowful attempts to backstab me in such a dark, underhanded manner. You should loathe thy head when you pass, so as not to arouse my wrath. I know as much of honor as any man could, Cedric. Tell me, how one faces a retreating army. You provided only your back as a target, I had little choice in my attacks. You needed only speak my name, and I would have turned to face thee in glee, my dear Torvald. How I wish this was shallow crack so I could draw my sword upon you now. Cedric, do not draw thy blade. Remember the feast and our agreed upon peace? The war. Is over. I remember that feast. I remember when it was in this very room. But it is no more. A feast is a place of cheer and happiness, and there is no smile upon my face. Perhaps if the company were better. I ask your leave, for I wish to be among friends. Cedric! Call thy name to your backside. What say you? If I thought you were a man of honor, I would accept your challenge. Is my blood not red enough for your taste? I would like nothing better than to taste your blood. Fill a goblet with your juice, and I will drink it. Feed me your flesh, which is a filling meal. Then. Give me your head to keep as a trophy. This head, though mine to give, is not yours to take. If your blade can reach my gut, and these eyes, this nose and mouth, my brains are yours, and I should not care what becomes of them. Then feel my iron tooth, Torals! Cedric, stop this madness! Death! He wishes to fight, my lord! I command thee, replace thy blade! How could you allow such a disgraceful display, Lord Nigel? Good prince, 
was in their hearts that they should fight. I cannot command man's desires. <laughs> I did not come this far from Enfield to spill blood on foreign soil. The war is over. It has ended. Never again will our swords cross. Oh, and Cedric, you must never quarrel about this hideous war again. And I trust that your vassals will do the same, Lord Nigel. I did not, <clears throat> I did not agree to peace with half a heart, and although the terms of the treaty are not yet signed, we are bound by it from this moment on. Can you uphold this? Why feel as you, Leonard? No more blood. No. Best avoid confrontation. You will only stoke our rancor. Come away with me. I'm sorry, Leonard. Oh, look at the brighter thing. Oh, look to the future, not the past. After all, this is a feast. Think of seeing old friends, family, your wife. Have you seen her? Who? My wife. No. She is off again, the harlot. I must find her. <laughs> will ruin everything, Coral. I was only toying with the fool, Nigel. His face turns bright red and he near explodes. That, that tickles me. <laughs> Your entertainment shall be my downfall. Entertainment, yes! You have to finish my tale, thanks to Cedric's interruption. Do you remember where I left off? You invited her to lunch. Yes. So, I asked, would you care to dine with me? Had she agreed? No. He did not think it was polite to dine in public being a wedded woman. So I invited her to my haunt. <laughs> yes, and then? But along the way I passed the silly peddler and in ridiculous ploy I bought her a red robe. She jest. So once I speak truth. <laughs> Continue. And to my meek couple we did present ourselves. She turned to face me. Go on, Toro. I need only say lunch was more than satisfying. <laughs> you not spare the details. Let us sit. Uh, oh, how are you this evening? Very well, thank you. Those are lovely roses. Uh, they're good business today. Great, <laughs> <laughs> the sweetest flavor. I think she'll have one as a gift. Here, lad. Oh, thank you. It's as sweet as the spring air, as sweet as my dear Mildred. Wrath and rage, I trust her not, Lynette. Come, Cedric. I'll not have it. I'll not. Cedric, compose thyself, lest thy hot head turn into a fever. Oh, sit. Have a drink. You cannot see betrayal in all of Mildred's affairs. Exercise faith. You preach faith. Loyalty to me as unto a friend. She may claim to have bought those flowers, Lennon, but I know the truth. Somewhere she keeps a man and has the nerve to bear about his gifts in a public declaration. I will find out who her carnal confidant is and discover who imparts roses to a married woman. Pedder! Stop! Yes, Cedric. <laughs> Do you know my wife, Mildred Gibbons? Oh, yes, sir. Have you seen her today? Yes, sir. Who was she with? No, sir. What, what, what do you mean, no? Uh, I did not see her. But you just said you did. Uh, my mind has changed. <laughs> <laughs> did you or didn't you see my wife? I did not. Then where did she get those roses? From my basket. <laughs> and who purchased the roses from you? Oh, I cannot say. Tell me, you say. Cannot. Oh, you'll tell Huckster, or I'll slice that unspeaking tongue from my muzzle and pluck those unsightly eyes from my ignorant skull. Speak! <laughs> Await me. Cedric, you converse with caution. <laughs> What speak you so secretly? 
Tales of a fitting lunch. <laughs> was the cuisine so delightful as to recall in vivid detail? It was. Did you invest in a rose this afternoon? I did not. This peddler claims you have. He lies. He has no call to. Perchance I did. Where to went the rose? I know not. You lie! Speak out right against me. This audience knows your character. You are a liar and a cheat. Seek you a short life. Your words shall discover your death. It means it not, good gentlemen. I am sorry, Toro, but to defend against you would reduce my moral standards to a lowly position. You suit me not. Do not deliver insults and walk away. Only creditable gentlemen bear arms against me. In order to contradict your judgment, Cedric, I will stand in Toro's behalf of his good nature. Lord Nigel. Are you sure you wish to risk your untarnished reputation on such refuse? Torald has proven to be a trustworthy friend. My apologies, then, dear Torald. <laughs> but my accusation still stands. Dare you deny the roses came from your hand? I do, sire. Very well. I will allow God to pass judgment. Let whosoever vanquish the other be the honest man. I will deal with this man before the feast's end. The contest shall be ended into this day's tie and schedule. And I'll allow this, Cedric. This is not the result of war, Leonard. This man has enjoyed my dear wife. Such circumstances as these, I must defend at sword point or lose my honor. Our duel is on, not for war, but for love. Cedric, one moment. You were right. I am a liar. Gave you then the roses to Mildred? I did so this very afternoon. This assembly is witness to your disclosure! <laughs> Man. But, um, this evidence is a mark to my good name. To recount my repute, I have no other choice, Torald. We shall duel tonight. You'd best not toil with him, Torald. The Abrath and Rage. <laughs> Cedric, you cannot allow this. It, it was a rose, no more. A rose? <laughs> a rose bears in its petals an undeniable love. The hand that passes the rose gives more than any other gift can yield. What is a rose but a fragile bud, delicate scent and velvet corolla that all too soon withers? Dies. It is not the flower that makes the present precious, <laughs> but the intentions in the gift, and such intentions towards Mildred, I cannot tolerate. Oh, forgive me, Cedric! What? I knew not to whom I bestowed the rose. Had I known Mildred was the wife with the great Cedric Gibbons, my desire would never have been informed! Uh, you gave the roses to Mildred? Yes, this morning. And I'm grieving all wrong I have done. Please forgive me! Is this a joke? <laughs> Don't really enjoy me, stranger. What do you have to do with this affair? I most humbly plead for forgiveness. What causes you to tell me these stories? Was it Charles doing? <laughs> oh, sire, I'm so in. I bravely erred. You've discovered the rose. I made a present to your wife. I say, I am sorry. Here's your girlfriend, Cedric. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, Charles. You are not innocent. Tell me, minor virgin. Did this groveling Nicholas purchase a rose from you this morning? Such a long time ago. <laughs> Mark you his features. Can you recall them? 
Yes, a rose he did buy. A rose, only one and not many. Barely one. You did purchase a single rose. A single rose, for the simplicity of love. I bought one bud. <laughs> but when I spoke with Mildred, not a single rose did she have in her hair, but twins. If Nicholas gave only one, then the other did come from Toral's hand. It all in one day. <laughs> Quiet, knave! Display the guilt you should feel for blackening my family's name. Two roses in the same day. What ill luck I have acquired. <laughs> Torald, you curly rascal! Duh! <laughs> Straight up bar, our duel does stand. Then the sword shall make amends, I can tolerate it no more. Let us go, Torals. Now. As for you, cowering infidel. Take pity, sire. My course is set. Stand, Nicholas. One rose was far too many to learn of a second that's twist my heart. Rise, you begging dog! Thou hast already proclaimed thy guilt, now accept your sentence. Under the eyes of God, we shall combat to the death, and may the righteous man find victory. No, sir. Stop weeping, Jackal, and sharpen thy blade. We shall duel, Nicholas. Oh, no, no, my God's grace, no. That's right. One moment. Axton's reputation will suffer from your absence, Nicholas. See to it that your carcass is present. Oh, I abuse your compassion, Cedric. Stand, uncle, and face thine enemy. <laughs> Young Gavin, why speak it so? I hereby proclaim my love with the Lady Mildred Gibbons. From <laughs> now on, wed. Here, yeah, what say you? I did win her admirations this very evening, and then make a proposal. With the rose! Oh, rose! Oh, you didn't give my lady a rose! Stand back, Cedric! Oh, my blade will cut you. You request a more twelve with a fair hand? What say you? <laughs> you wish to duel with me? <laughs> Your blood is red, so the rose. Oh, stupid child! When Nicholas begs for forgiveness, you pray for death. Death! <laughs> Several deaths like this have been my death. Do not think you can press me! I can still gather my wits and write this ridicule. I will not be made the fool! I am Cedric Gibbons. I have fought in the war. I am a great master of the sword, and I am a respectable man! <laughs> How dare the inhabitants of this castle turn against me in force? Your prayers are answered, Dunderhead! If I have to kill every man, I should do so, and this infant will be first! <laughs> <laughs> Young Gavin, she thy sword! I have already arranged a time for combat. <laughs> I pray for that hour then! 
What insanity is formed in this chamber? What is the cause of this mischief? This incident is only a foreshadowing of the future. You have pledged to fight three duels at each at once. So I have. It is incorrigible. First the stranger, then the rogue, then the child. I scarcely believe the performance that has just preceded me. What will become of them? Oh, I know not, Leonard, but let us leave. No sooner did we enter this castle than I learned of four affairs with lovely Mildred. I fear to say Longo would introduce a fifth suitor. <laughs> <laughs> I must regain my breath. Come to the night where we can drink from the well. Sadly, Cedric is confused. His honor being thus abused, yet still he laughs. He is amused by how Three villains, roses used. Ne'er been as jovial as this night. He loves to feast. Mm, he has many things to show his cheer for. Yes, tomorrow he shall have a son. And I a fa father. And I a husband. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Oh, you. Mm, 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 mm. Impatience prods me. Must we wait for the treaty to be signed? Yes, we must. This day has few waking hours remaining. Might wait till nigh, the sun is drawn on chariots before peace, and our wedding is made. <laughs> you have waited for the war to end. How are a few more hours going to harm you? How? Why, I mark every minute. Every second I suffer. <laughs> Yet you'll have me for the rest of your life. Ooh, yes. Cheer yourself. <laughs> this feast is your reception. By tomorrow you will be wed. By tomorrow you will have nothing to frown upon. Tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow. I pray for the sun, then. I hear the thunder of my heart. <laughs> that is the door. <laughs> Who dares disturb us? It must be my father. Very good, then. I shall not forbid his entry. <laughs> you come in, Prince Scorby. Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Tomorrow I shall be a new father. Please call me by that given name, or yes. if you prefer else, then Nigel is an acceptable assignation. <laughs> Quite true. Know that I shall not regard you as father-in-law, but as father in heart. Ooh, all is well, but do not regard me as sister. Never, love. 
This is truly the easiest way to gain a son. <laughs> Dear Father, I know that in the merry spirit of this feast you have little appetite for ill tidings, but I must feed you some sour tidbits. Oh. In all honor of the celebration, I loathe to dampen your cheerful mood and alter thy visage into doleful contortion. So forgive my sad sobering when I tell you that Cedric knows of the assassination. Jeffrey, no! Yes! However, one elusive yet substantial enterprise pervades Cedric's vigilant purpose. He supposes to discover this nameless identity and frustrate his disingenuous design. I bade him fortunate hunting, though I believe his wits will ne'er flush out the villain. His initial error was approaching me to incite my assistance, to which I implicitly pledged, yet have neglected to effectuate. He does not suspect you, then. His education of our intrigue was so ruefully taught by Bernard Harrington that I believe his prospects of defeating us are unreasonable. <laughs> that poor paltry Bernard eavesdropped as Natalia implored my forbearance this morning, but fortunately he could not identify my voice nor find opportunity to look upon my face, for my discovery should have ruined us. But if Cedric finds out, what will we do? Do not worry. I have made allowance for this alteration and kept the advantage. Already Cedric has led astray. I avoid all mistrust as he accepts what I say as accurate truths. Um, but that is dangerous. The peril is inconsequential as I pilot their hunt. I can forward them on paths of sad fruition until our treaty is signed. Already I have implicated Toril, proposing him as your mercenary. You must be cautious, Jeffrey. You need not worry. Toril, yes. He is more the killer than you. Cedric will attempt to dispose of him. Toril is not an easy man to kill. He may be vulgar, but he has cunning too, and a sword to match. Cedric is a worthy opponent. He shall scour the castle till my father is saved. Meanwhile, the true assassin laughs beneath his nose. <laughs> Glad that lies and deceit have no odor, Jeffrey. True, for Cedric is not unlike a hound sniffing out a fox. Yet note how the hound can always find even the most cunning of foxes. If Cedric is following our trail, be it so misguided, he may at some time find proper direction. We must prepare for Cedric's vengeance. What shall we do? My militia must protect us from Cedric. I should not want Cedric harmed. He is no more an enemy of mine than a brother would be. You need not worry. He is safe if he causes no disturbance. Yet I expect him to react. Hmm. What are Leonard's other guards? They are loyal whilst Leonard lives. They only serve in fear of dire punishment. Then we need only concern ourselves with Cedric. And we can continue as planned. Have you no fears, Jeffrey? True, given his imminent brutality. I have reason to fear. But my friendship has furnished courage. My only sentiments towards Cedric are pity and compassion, for he is deprived much by my hand. Then you're prepared to kill your father? Prepared? I was prepared many years ago, but ne'er was given a proper moment. Once I was envious of Cedric. Long ago, he set forth to fight the wars that won our family, the many lands between Enfield and your own fair harbor. His deeds recounted by my father were most remarkable. Upon his return, he received all the glory my father could bestow upon him, as well as a resplendent sword. In my immaturity, I was much impressed by the grandeur of this weapon, so I asked Father for one of my own. He said I was too small for such a heavy blade and gave me his dagger instead. Well contented for the time, I kept the dagger. It is this same dagger that will find lodging in his spine. My hesitation is only on your insistence. I understand the importance of this treaty, so have deferred myself till it is signed. Yet once his ring lifts from the parchment, 
His soul shall lift from his carcass and leave such a hollow man, he should split like an eggshell! Yes! I am prepared for this moment! For many years, I have prepared! <laughs> I am sorry for you, Jeffrey. I pray that God forgives your actions. You are responsible for my actions, Natalia. Pray that he forgives you. <laughs> Where am I cause for guilt? Had I not loved you, I would not long to kill my father. My purpose was clear once you and I were divided by his witless war. Then your father is to blame for his own death. Had he not started the war between our two nations, you would never have come to Hamburg as an ambassador for peace, and we shall never have met. Then father commits indirectly a suicide. It would seem. I must return to the feast. So quickly. I will be missed by my father. Return to your father then, and you'll be missed by me. Yes, but for you to mark my absence strengthens your longing. For my father, it only angers him. Jeffrey, I love you. Tell me again. <laughs> when the sun is nigh. That foolish prince. He should surrender his plan before it is too late. No, I will let Jeffrey proceed. His own neck is in danger, not ours. This is too hazardous a risk to take. My trust in the boy has waned. He seemed an intelligent child. Yet his knowledge is by no means practical. Betimes, actuality escapes him. His anxiousness and desire to perform our needed sacrifice unsettles me. Perhaps you should cancel the assassination. No, we'll let Jeffrey proceed with his scheme. But I will prepare to save him in case his puerile games do not defeat Cedric's wits. Why must we risk that chance? No harm can come from killing Cedric. If we disrupt the feast, then it may not sign the treaty. He cannot afford to allow the war to continue any more than us. That's true, Natalia, but... He has no choice but to sign or lose his principality. This is too much trouble for one nation. It is easier than continuing the war. Many lives would be lost if he tried to take infield by force. In this way, few men die. Leave Cedric to me, then. Be careful, for Cedric's defenses are keen. Cedric is already pledged to a duel with Torald. I will force this duel in the hopes that Torald can kill Cedric. If he cannot, well, I can make other arrangements. The principality is small, but its lands are fertile. The plans are laid. Enfield shall be ours by daybreak. <laughs> 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 again, seeking your prostrate pleasures. Promise me nothing. Your prisoner makes quite a fuss, Cedric. I'm no prisoner. Indeed. Could I put my eyes in her bosom to know where she goes, I could trust her. <laughs> that would be best, for the eyes taint the imagination. Have you spoken with Natalia? I did, Cedric, and through my subtle baiting, fished for this rogue's name. So cleverly did I angle that she did not taste the hook in her mouth. And I pulled from this sea of anonymity a most sizable catch. Every intimation suggested that Torold is our fish and fiend. Then your deductions proved true. How should we proceed? Let Torold's own folly be his death. I may urge you, Cedric, to press upon your duel with him. 
Indeed, you have the opportunity before you to prevent the assassination. Very well. I will force him to my blade and force my blade into him. <laughs> then there is nothing to trouble our minds. When this day is over, I will no longer worry. It is father. It keeps me thinking. I have appointed guards of loyalty to lead us from the castle should the need arise. Are they trustworthy? Well, they are intimate friends with whom I have trained and fought. Well, there are a few men I would place my faith in after Leonard and yourself and these two soldiers. And their abilities. Well, they are the best of fighters. Then why should you worry? I am thinking we should depart now, before the treaty is signed. No, the covenant must be made. We cannot continue with this accursed war. But if the treaty is signed and the prince killed, it is invalidated. No. Once his seal is set into the treaty, it is legally the mark of Enfield, and his own consequences make little difference. Do not worry. You have ensured our escape. This game of rats and cats cannot continue. Yes, the fish found a new home! Splendid! <laughs> uh, uh, um, uh, we were just, uh, uh... With all uh, respect for Nicholas, he is an excellent host, but the tumult and turmoil in the feasting hall disheartened us, <laughs> so we sought the shelter of solitude. Yes. Uh, uh, the times, the rested moments, make the festive moments more appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> we were just discussing the merits of peace and Cedric's future now that the war is over. Oh, Cedric has never needed anything aside a nation to fight for and a sword to fight with. He is without passion, without war. I rest not for wanting more. <laughs> well, some would find it a blessed pleasure. Idleness he does not treasure. And when there's no calling for the sword, he comes to Mildred when he's born. <laughs> <laughs> so I've learned. And will try to live with. And no doubt also, if you can. <laughs> I am known to be a stubborn man. <laughs> stubborn and true, for this war cracks his brain and he will not let it in. What will you do without war? <laughs> I know not. <laughs> for once he's without a solution. <laughs> As I am forever faithful, my loyalties are unto Leonard and will be passed along with the crown unto Geoffrey. I am merely a servant to a royal bloodline. <laughs> the family needs a bleed. How do you mean, Geoffrey? The Enfield line reeks with bitter blood and should be drained of an heir such as me. I sometimes wish Cedric were the legatee, for he would make a better prince than me. <laughs> Such ideas are unimaginable, for you are the heir to Enfield and cannot escape that noble calling. But don't you agree? You and I are not so different, Geoffrey. You could perform as well as I in your father's position. Though our lives were spent together, you have the wisdom a mother provides where I do not. That is your advantage. Oh, enough, enough. From your demeanor, you'd think this was a funeral rather than a... Feast, Cedric, temper thy metal with pride. Oh, think of the victories you've had and rejoice in them. Oh, this little gathering would sadden my spirits with such sour faces surrounding me. Sorrow does not benefit a feast. Return to the hall and lift up thy spirits to a merrier mood. Some cheer would be gratifying. My lord. Yes. Leonard, sire. Mildred. Would you do something, please? Look, Cedric has been bound in shackle. <laughs> Tis best for wives. Ha! <laughs> ah! Come along. Jeffrey, aren't you coming? I have no interest in the feast. I will stay in the quiet and read. Very well. Oh, I'm coming, woman. What did you mean by insulting me that way, Jeffrey? Insulting you. You may blacken Enfield's name in front of me, but not when there's guests present. They need not know your opinion of my principality. I spoke what I believe. Will thou chastise me for that? Yeah, if I were ill-tempered, I would have struck thee then. Be grateful that Cedric covered thy blunder. You cannot cover my inadequacies when I take the throne. That's exactly why you must strive to improve yourself. You spend your days reading these books, and yet you have no idea what it is to rule a kingdom. You must prepare for your obligations. Though you find me a 
poor candidate. I believe I am sufficiently primed to become the prince. If you think reading these books all day is going to prepare you for what you've got to face? Only books provide knowledge worth knowing. What about protecting home and castle? Weapons only kill and slay. The sword is merely a barbarian's law. You must be more than a lawgiver. You must be a potentate. The people must love and follow you. Uh, loyalty is your strongest ally. Popularity merely benefits conceit. Unlike you, I need not experience the vile delectations of conquest and dominion. Oh, you've overestimated your own mind. This harsh world needs more than words to succeed. Oh, you have no understanding of its realities. Understanding? You're the one with the feeble mind. I'm surprised your loins could have produced such genius. Don't insult you me! You are I... a fool! You crave supremacy and notoriety. You slaughter hundreds of men in fruitless wars, and you want me to tread your bloody path. Ah! What will you do? Beat me again, strike me down, flick pain on your own son as you have countless others. You killed out men for affronting you. Why not me? Ah! <laughs> Try to escape! Try to escape! You see, words... Words do not always win. Unless you learn that, you will never be prince! I have no desire to be. Return to the hall and act as if you are my son. Do not come easy. Perhaps I should administer a sharp sermon. See conversion to that question. Hmm? So draw the line at slaying babes. There is nine. Cedric may not arrive. Oh. He will show, or else suffer it. Something of this honor, much worse than my sword can cause. <laughs> oh, Cedric approaches. He comes, he goes, my butcher is here. Show your robot, Nicholas. Let him not think you're a weasel. Welcome, hounds, to your bereavement. Let it be known that this day I will take the lives of three men for the honor of Mildred Gibbons. You are free for the time, Lily. Thank you, sir, in chains. For wives, tis best. Then you would tie a leash to me. You, dear, are not Mildred. Merrily, I am not. <laughs> Our bond is a slender thread. Threads are easily broken. Naturally. Where the chain cannot be torn apart, the thread divides at will. So the uncut thread between two loves is proof of love fulfilled. <laughs> we are ready to face you, sir. <laughs> Approach then, rose bearers, and face the great. Be me bravely or cowardly, but step forward, settle this matter. Who shall fight me first? Not I! Step aside, dear Mildred, and allow me to evince the vigor of ardent affection. Torrent, 
thief and cutthroat, step forward into my soul. It's not Toral's right to take your life. Bite me, Sacred. Side boy. I have called on Toral. Sacred, who will defend the honor of acting against Nicholas if you are slain by Toral? That is of no consequence. Quite rude. Come forward, Nicholas. Oh, my lord, first of all, Come. Cedric, I must protest. My honor, too, lies in your match with Toral. I will not have the duel canceled by your death. Tis unfair. I didn't challenge Cedric fairly. I should get a sword in edgewise. <laughs> Decide, then, who will firstly fight. I shall wait. It seems, Cedric, as though a logical order ought to be established. True. How then do you find the logic? Toral was the first man you challenged. Oh, the toilet goes first. <laughs> Yet Nicholas was the first to offer Mildred a road. Very true, Nicholas Tis. No, 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 no. no. My Tardis, my affection, should be no reason to delay my duel, Cedric. I did challenge you, exact a commitment first. Who <laughs> will fight Cedric? I will fight Cedric! I will kill him! Wrong! Torals will kill Cedric. Thank Nicholas you. should kill him. No, fight the lad! What say you, Torald? Combat me! And the victor will have his luck with Cedric. <laughs> <laughs> As you wish, boy. You'll figure out does your age. Hold a moment. Cease. As I would like my competition to destroy themselves, let us not forget who is thrice disordered here. I will not have my enemies killing each other for the privilege to best me. I must kill all three. True. My end will not be met by Torald's death at the hands of the child. How will we solve this puzzle? I will fight all three at once. Oh, very well. But the Cedric, <laughs> though you combat all three, only one submits a death blow onto you. What of the other two, then, whose duel is cut short? Again, we are without solution. Oh, decide, then, I'm bored. I'm told! I mean, you yes. come yes. at me! Oh, oh, my sword! Your sword is real! Oh, I'm oh, 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 Hey! Stop! There is only one way to solve this poser. What is that, Lennon? Nicholas is here for having given the Lady Mildred a rose this morning. My apologies, Cedric. Torald is present for the same deed, having done so at today's lunch. Quite so. And Gavin is before us for his, as a result of his floral donation this evening, is he not? Sweet Gavin. Oh. And you, for finding the rose, <laughs> roses, Mildred's hair. I did. Mildred Gibbons did accept roses from her three lovers, the milksop, the shopper, and the swain, and did so under the vows of marriage. She then, without pretension, paraded these blossoms as ornaments without regard for sacred union, husband, or distinction. Uh, estimable woman of the gentry would have privied this, but she displayed it openly. Therefore, it is she who is guilty, and I, you should have no quarrel with these gentlemen here. Oh, they were torn by a passion. Oh, by an instinct they could not govern. Oh, I myself could not have resisted. If so, fainted. Ahem! Therefore, <laughs> you should... Find no fault in them or Mildred's appearing as a jade. They were merely refreshment for her thirst. There's truth in his words. Has my demeanor been so blind? Yes, it has. Pulchritude should not have such potency. What do you have to say for yourself, Mildred? My lord, 
I'm sorry. <laughs> You're right, Bennett. Nicholas! Oh, my lord. Axton is your home, and you are far from any knowledge of Enfield. Had you known that Mildred was already married, a chance you would have behaved differently. Verily, I would have shot the coquette! <laughs> Lord Nigel, my apologies for questioning your honor. And I dismiss your impudence too, Toro. Thank you, Cedric. As for you, young Gavin, this effigy mars my conception of Mildred. I ask, in all honor, above my dare. Done. <laughs> I have no discord with any of you good people. The duel is called. <laughs> My only quarrel remains with Paul Mildred. Quarrel? With me? There is only one way to keep the people of this castle from having dear Mildred. Cedric! There must be no more roses. <laughs> Cedric, I love you! Oh, you fool! I'm sorry, sire. Please, let me clean you off. Leave it alone. My rag is dry, sire. Come with me and I'll take care of you. Lord! Let's see what's going on here. I have a nice horse. You are running into this. Do you realize the value of this probe? Having all the cover is destroyed, we'll destroy the real insensitive actor. Is this what you call the Nicholas Boothley Myers for this death? Oh, it's a device. Do you see it? Do you see it? Hey, you're like, imbecile fashions. Oh, you'll ruin this dumb and you graceless curtain. No! Oh. Hand me your towel. Must be altered. Ambush shows they know everything. 
so it does. I have girded ourselves to fend off Nigel's guards. Nigel protected Toral strongly. And he also urged Toral to set upon me. It seems Nigel favors eliminating the entire Enfield government and has the assurance of Toral's proficiency in, in accomplishing the task. My suspicions are satisfied. We will sign the treaty and brace ourselves for what may come. The feast is ended. The treaty is prepared. But I must go to Nigel. I will keep my guard, Cedric. Ah! <laughs> Can you walk? Perhaps the pain had ended. Earl is waiting outside. What shall we do? What choice do we have? If you safeguard yourself from Torald, he will not be a detriment. Jeffrey and I will stay near you, Leonard, and guard our proximity. As soon as you've penned the treaty, we will quit this castle. Now, prepare yourselves for the procession. I must end this horrid war. I should think that if there is an assassin in the audience, and Princess Natalia knows who it is, she could not help but look to his direction to note his progress. I will steal my eyes to hers and note where her attention lies. If she looks to Torald, I will ready for his attack. Very good, Cedric. And you must guard your father's back, Geoffrey. I understand that you are not an able fighter, but you need only protect. We have a close escape, so we will make our peace and depart. Could you help me with my cape, Cedric? Oh, God, Geoffrey, you must this for yourself. Thank you. I call everyone to the hall. It is time. Are you certain of this, Cedric? Trust me. I do. I watch. If we are ready, let us proceed.
The feast has reached an end. With bloodshed, death, and foul mayhem. And peace may never be known again. Unless these tragic wounds do men. Mm -hmm. 